My name's Matt, welcome to Pony Power. Just another quick tutorial type-ish explanation theory video again. Um, there's a lot of things, different things you have to measure on engines and I've been searching for the last 20 minutes for a 50cc piston and I cannot find one because I usually chuck them out, unfortunately. But um, without the piston I can still show you the essence of what's going on and I know it's bad form of me not to have the piston and show you properly, but you can get the gist of what's going on. Basically, uh, what I want to show you today, like it says in the tile, is um, ring end gap. So all piston rings have a gap, um, as you can see here. And with two stroke uh, engines, they have a pin inside uh, the side of the piston, and it's just a ring pin, and it's to stop the rings rotating so this gap doesn't move around. I've got a four stroke. Um, piston here, this is uh, a Mazda piston I think and um, the ring grooves don't have a, uh, a pin in because um, it doesn't really matter if the rings, there is an orientation they have to put the rings in but it doesn't, it's not vital that the rings don't move so they're allowed to rotate around um, to no detrimental effect to the engine. With two strokes obviously you have these ports um, you have ports inside and these rings have quite aggressive edges so if the ring was allowed to rotate as soon as it passes a port the ring would pop out in the hole the piston carrying on going down and snap a ring off if you don't put your rings in correctly that's exactly what happens and uh, there's a lot of pictures and video well, a lot of pictures um, on the internet of people have got exactly that problem you'll see that the the ring travels outside of the ring gap and it'll break um, away of the piston. You'll see like a, a sweep in action of where it's eaten into the piston. Uh, and you know, it really messes up your cylinders usually and um, it's not a good day out. Right, back to ring gaps. The rings have gaps for two reasons. Number one is you'd never get them on if they were a complete circle. Um, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is is these rings need to be able to expand um, and it's a common misconception that the springiness of the spring um, is what forces the, pist uh, the piston ring against the cylinder wall. It's not. That is not enough pressure. I can easily squeeze that in there and the gases will easily escape behind it. What happens is is that the ring is actually thinner than the ring groove that it has to fit in. And weirdly enough, that's nearly exactly the right size for this piston. So there's a bit of play, and that plays there on purpose. And what happens is, is if I can find something to draw on, which I have done, and I'm one of these people who don't mind, this is just a box um, for some micrometers. I don't mind drawing on anything. Basically, what you have is you have the side of your piston your ring groove and then you have your cylinder wall so that's cylinder this is piston and the ring is actually smaller than the groove this is obviously exaggerated but what happens is it's also not as deep as the groove either and as the combustion gases expand they run down here, run behind the ring and force the ring outwards down and outwards if you run an engine at far too high RPM you get a thing called ring flutter where the ring just starts to wobble around in its groove up and down but it does it unevenly so one part of the ring goes to the top of the groove the other part goes down and it starts to flutter and um, that can be quite disastrous for an engine if it's if it, you know, the high RPM is maintained like that. Anyway so what has this got to do with ring end gaps? Well the fact of the matter is is that there's a gap between each end of the ring and this gap has to be um, accurately designed and accurately and accurately maintained because what happens is is if the grip if the gap's far too wide you just get gas blow by which is when the combustion process goes round the piston and enters your crankcase 
uh, which is not a good thing because you're losing power. Um, and you also start heating literally like a blanket around the piston, the piston starts to expand and it might seize. Um, the other thing is as well is that these gaps are usually quite tiny, the, you know, they're point something or point zero or something of a millimetre. Um, and what happens is, is when the ring starts to heat up, because obviously the, the, the combustion gases are going round the piston, behind the rings, so they're heating the ring directly, and the friction between the cylinder wall and the ring, and the fact that it's very thin metal, it's very thin, it's usually cast iron or chromoly steel, um, it's usually what rings are made out of, that's why they're quite brittle. Um, they uh, heat up and actually transfer a lot of uh, the heat from the piston to the cylinder wall, it's one of the... Um, major ways heat is transferred away from the, uh, the, the reciprocating parts to the rest of the uh, cylinder and then eventually to the water cooling that surrounds it. So um, these experience a lot of friction and a, lo a lot a lot of um, or a very high to higher temperatures, quite high running temperatures. So what happens is the ring expands just like metal or any other material is when it gets hot it expands and the ring gap will close now if the gap is too shallow the ring gap will expand so much that the actual ring will pinch and break um, so that's why it's quite important that the ring gap is maintained but how do we measure this well if I had a piston I'd show you the way you do it with piston but the other way you can just do it is just slot your ring in just like that and then you find something of a certain depth um, albeit a nut or something like that something you can skirt around the entire piston without scratching the ball um, so you'd use like a, 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 a millimeter a, a 10 mil nut or something just so you can push the ring down for this I'm just showing you how to measure it not um, accurately so basically the ring has to be sat um, flush all the way around like I said by hand this is a very hard thing to do you can go around with a you can use your um, the depth part of your vernier or you can just go around with a scale if you're really going to do it that way and just make sure that the whole thing's pretty round all the way around um, be careful not to scratch the absolute crap out of your uh, cylinder this is a knackered cylinder but I mean, like I said this is just a demonstration and just say for instance that your um, ring gap in your manual is not point let me find one not point what a uh, 0 0.01 mil you then get your feeler gauge and you need a feeler gauge there's no real other way to do this you get your feeler gauge and you plop that between your ring gap so your ring gaps in there and I'll see if I can I'm crap at doing this so so I've got a good picture then that way so your ring gaps there and you just measure it like this now what you should do is that one was far too slack, so you get a lot bigger one, so we'll go for 1.5. It's usually, I think it's 0.8 mil. And you keep on sliding it through until it just nips it and starts to move the ring. It doesn't have to be really tight. If you go really tight, then you're just defeating the purpose, but you just keep on pushing it through. And then that's your ring gap. Now, what do you do if your ring gap's too big? You need a new set of rings. Um, what do you do if it's too small? You can actually pull your ring out, get a small um, needle file and very carefully you get one side of the ring. Now one, sometimes one side is dotted or will have some kind of label on um, and then one won't be. This is only sometimes, like I say. But what you can do is you can, if it's just a tiny amount, if you, your ring gap is just a tiny bit out, you just get it like that and you rub it as flat as you can. Just to take that bit off your ring, make sure you get rid of all the burrs and scratches with your file, maybe a bit of sandpaper, emery cloth, something like that. And then stick it in and try again. You keep on going until you get the right gap. So, that's uh, what... Um, ring end gaps are, why they're important and how to measure them and be very careful with your rings because you can easily snap them, it takes nothing, they are very brittle uh, very hard but very brittle and it really pisses you off if you've only got one set of rings you're about to stick the thing back together and you break it so 
yes, be very careful with rings. The other thing is as well is don't try to bend one end above the other to get them on your piston. You've got to spread them. Um, so, hope that helps and uh, check out the other videos.